Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. We are playing today a game known as Techtopia, Tango Tech's new massive modification of the villager system in Minecraft. I am heading toward what I believe to be the location of a nearby village. If we can just find the sun, we're yet at rise that we might discover from the skies. Okay, so that is the east there, maybe? This is the problem with starting in a jungle. You don't always know where you're going. That is a bad thing for me. I have been called upon to consult as a city planner to help the fair villagers of the Walden 5 settlement to develop new ways to expand their civilization. Okay, the sun there rises in the east. And I check my mine atlas with the seed entered. How do y'all... Joe Hills here. I set that seed, and I set it well, all lowercase, as you can tell. I simplify wherever I can. So, simply, I go now, then, to X376 and Z328 to meet the villagers who will hopefully pay to keep the food upon my plate. They have some questions, and I've got answers. But for now, they wait. Alrighty, it looks like we are indeed heading this way. And away we go, through the jungle. Now, this modification of the Minecraft game is pretty standard um, in terms of the scope of the mod is limited to what it is attempting to do best. Tango Tech understands scope. So he has simply said, I'm going to make the villager system optimal. I'm going to make managing villagers an opportunity to expand a small city. And I'm going to not really tamper with anything else. The terrain, as you can see, is otherwise unaltered. Okay, so we're at Z328 almost now, so then that means we need to head this way. The Walden 5 settlement, I've been told, is located yet at the triple intersection of an extreme hills biome, a jungle biome, hey, I see some extreme hills, and I'm pretty sure we're in the jungle now, as well as a savanna. So if we start seeing a savanna, we'll know we are in the right place. Now, because Tango Tech has chosen not to modify the basic spawning structure of the village too heavily in his efforts, that leaves it to us, the city planners in this modification, to uh, advise the villagers how yet they might create a uh, more perfect little location for themselves. Okay. Hey, what's that over there? Melons. Hey, those are helpful. Now, from what I've heard, the villagers enjoy a varied diet, and it contributes to their productivity, which, uh, you know, I'll be honest, I think everyone does, really. That's not too special for them. I like it when games have common sense mechanics, you know? I like it when the things that are true about our world are explored interestingly as foundational truths of other worlds with different rules. It allows the brain to kind of reflect in interesting ways. Man, all this darkness here makes me worry there's going to be mobs spawning. Oh, okay, so that special barrier represents the edge, as I understand it, of Tango Tech's villager path and system. So if we try to build cities for our villagers to live in beyond that border, they won't be able to get to them. So that means we have indeed come the right way. Let's go ahead and collect more melons. Because, I don't know, I don't want to starve on the way there. Nom nom, nom nom, nom nom nom, I say. As I attempt to find the mush. It's not a mushroom, the uh, melon. It's hard for the brain to say things that are not what you're looking at. But okay. Man, this darkness is going to be a problem for our lumberjacks. Lumberjacks, you might ask. Yes, indeed. Hey, there's the edge of the village. As you can see, there are going to be villagers here with special roles or, um, what do you call them? Yeah, jobs, even. Unlike Walden 2, where everyone could choose what sort of labor they would like to do, Walden 5 has villagers assigned particular roles. So, also, I wanted to explore over here. Yeah, I saw on the map that there was going to be a uh, lava pit here. And I thought to myself, like, maybe we should uh, make sure that that doesn't you know, imminently burn everything to the ground. Like, let's just quickly make sure that the trees here are off the ground enough. See, I'm on my way into the city, and I'm already 
I'm already saving some people some trouble. You know, I haven't even met with the uh, mayor yet. Although, I, I understand it's not... They don't have a formal, traditional mayor, mayoral structure. Let's go ahead and get this F3 menu off now that we know where we are. They have some sort of interesting combination of, like, a city architect and uh, a zoning officer or something? I, I don't even know. But, okay. That should hopefully keep that from spreading into the rainforest. Although, I'm a little nervous it won't. Last thing I want to do is have the city burn down on my way into town. You know? Although that would give me more room to work. So, there we go. We're going to use that lava as a resource later. And also, probably those cattle. So, where was I? Oh man, this mod, because I'm using a new installation of Minecraft, the auto jump seems to be enabled. Which I am not entirely used to. But, okay. So let's see what is over here. Oh, we've got all sorts of villagers running around. Can I determine what their jobs are by right-clicking on them? Only if I can catch them. Um, there we go. This person's job is farmer, and they have a whole list of tasks. They have health, they have hunger, they have happiness, and they have intelligence. Although that intelligence bar looks a little low. We might need to build a library or some other structures that might yet educate our populace in general. Now, uh-oh, that is not good that that is just lying on the ground. That town hall symbol is supposed to be right here. There we go. This is where the two gentlemen I need to meet with are. We've got a tradesman who will assign jobs to people. We'll have to buy little job tokens. And we've got an architect who will let us assign uh, building uh, plans to individual structures we construct. Now, I've also... I hear a zombie, which I think is not optimal. Okay, yeah, so we've got some issues with the sewers we're going to have to resolve. That much is clear. So anyway... Um, good day, gentlemen. I know that you guys are very busy, but I heard that your first task for me was going to be to ensure that your uh, storage hall was easily reachable by your villagers. So I just wanted to let you know I'm already on it. You don't even have to look at me. Oh, no. A lumberjack has taken damage from a zombie. Okay, so now we have two problems. Uh, where's this guard run into? Is he running to where the lumberjack is? Oh, yeah, that looks like a zombie over there. That zombie is on fire. We have only a melon. Oh no! I do not like that guy being hit. I do not like it one little bit. Woo! Okay. Well, it's always exciting over here. You guys seem to have an issue with this cave being um fairly unrestricted. We're going to just put a little thing here. Stop any zombies from running out. Yeah, that's uh that won't stop the baby zombies. But that'll help a little bit. Okay, so where can we find the storage hut? I've heard it's inaccessible, so that's a good... St oh, probably that one up there. Oh, good, this bedroom is also inaccessible. So why don't we uh, simply create some sort of access possibility protocol here. By protocol, I'm going to say, like, a stoop. But yeah, now people can go in here and visit that. Now, this uh, access to this storage area, these guys are all trying to get up there. They can't. That is a problem. We're going to go ahead and install a simple stairwell here. Hopefully this will allow them to path up there. We'll have to do something better in the long term. But for right now, that's completely insufficient. Dang it, another farmer has taken damage. Why are they taking damage? Oh, there's a cave up there, too. Cave up there with zombies. I'm gonna have to get my own sword the rate we're going. Y'all got too many zombie problems up here. If I start punching them, though, they're gonna, uh, what do you call that? Social spawn. So, we're gonna go ahead and block that off. Dang it. Although that whole area there feels too dark for me. Okay. Hello, a bat. How are you doing? Okay, is that the sun rising or the sun setting? Sun setting. We are going to want to go to bed quickly to ensure that we don't have, uh, what do you call it, monsters that spawn and kill us all. So let's just make sure that this path is open so villagers can indeed store things in our villager storage area. Hey, here's some emeralds that we can start with. That's great. This is not a well-lit space. I'm going to move this torch as well. Just while we're moving torches. Okay. 
Um, is it getting dark enough yet that I can sleep? <laughs> is this villager going to be mad at me because I don't know what that symbol means? I'm going to have to learn to speak the local language. This is a real deficit of foreknowledge on my part that I've not previously uh, researched that. Okay, it looks like nighttime outside. Why can't I sleep in the bed? Is this like a dedicated to the villager's vid? Okay, that one worked. Maybe that person had already claimed that bed, so I need to claim the other bed. Okay, so we've at least now relocated our spawn. We've got somebody else taking zombie damage over here. Let's go see if we can help with that. He is not seen to be doing very well. I need to get a real sword also, just kind of as a side note. Whoa, more caves. Okay, here's what I'm thinking I need to do. I need to just clear some trees, gather some wood, and arm myself. I This whole population has security problems. They have Latin problems. Before we can start any real city planning, we need to do the foundational work of just making sure that the lowest tier of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is completely met. So, and that is, uh, I don't know, security? Not being... Not being on fire, basically, I think is how the XKD guy put it. No matter how much you want something, if you were on fire, you would want to not be on fire more. And, oh, speaking of which, let's go make sure that lava pit hasn't set everything aflame again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, spreading a little bit that way. I'm going to just punch that out real quick. I want to save this lava for later. It could be very valuable, very valuable as a local natural resource for Latin and all, all sorts of other things. We could do natural lava lamps, you know? We could maybe export those. I heard there's a merchant that's supposed to spawn here and trade us for things. Technically, only the stuff that the villagers store in the storage hall, I think, is eligible for merchant trading. So, hey, so we got one sword that wasn't there before. We got some tools. Yeah, so these green named items are eligible for trading. The stuff I harvest myself, like this jungle wood, is not. So, in the core concept of what we have to achieve, though, right now, we gotta make an axe and a pickaxe. We're gonna we're gonna need an axe and we're gonna need a pickaxe, and I don't want to use the ones that they're making. Um. Okay, hello, a guard. Let's go find some. Um. Uh, let's go find some stone, and if we can find some coal too, that will be a really helpful boon. I'd like to. Oh, what is this person doing? This person is a farmer, okay? They're not very... Yeah, nobody here is very well learned. Hey, there's some coal. So, of course, I did not bring a shovel. So we are just going to head down here, harvest some of this coal. Hopefully it won't drop us straight into lava. Although, I mean, we can see down past it, so we know it's okay that way. But, I mean, the bigger concern is what if we just fall to... Uh a wall of lava coming in from the side. Anything could happen. Could be a lot of things happening. But that's fine. Okay, so I hear a zombie, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna choose to ignore it. Just gonna choose to ignore it. Okay, we are grabbing our coal. We haven't been attacked by anything, although I hear an Enderman nearby. Oh, there's iron. But I also need before I can get that iron, I need to make a stone pickaxe, I think. I don't think you can... Can you mine iron with uh, this kind of pickaxe? Maybe, but I don't want to risk it. Do not want to risk it. So we're going to set up our crafting bench here. Oh, that is a dangerous place. That could have creepers in it. Good planning on my part. So we're going to quickly create a stone pickaxe, which will let us harvest the iron. I'm wondering if we have to cover this hole so the villagers don't fall in there. Oh, there's lava down there. Lava everywhere. This is... Man, they should have called this Lava Town, not Walden 5. But whatever, that's fine. Oh, yeah, also, let's make a shovel and a sword. Well, we'll make the sword when we're not down here. We do need to make torches, though. So let's go ahead and light up some of this. Just in the interest... Oh, hey, there's actually an exit to this pit that's not terrible to get out of. There's actually a path that leads down there. That's actually kind of nice. Okay, so... Hey! Oh, here's some armor and some food and some gold. That's going to come in handy as well. 
Luckily, they've told me that I can basically use anything around the town in my efforts. Okay, so I figure probably the first priority is going to be lighting up those caves while the uh, villagers, like the initial farmers and, um, dang it, uh, lumberjacks and what have you, go ahead and collect the materials that we'll need to trade with our merchant to obtain more emeralds. Yeah, these guys just love hanging out over here by this dangerous cave, which I don't personally feel super comfortable with. So let's go ahead and light this up some to keep the baddies at bay. Any exposed veins of iron here? No, that would be too convenient. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I kind of like that this is a little bit different from the traditional vanilla experience in that I'm not immediately just like, okay, I gotta build myself a house. It's like, first thing I gotta do is find a way to protect these villagers. And they'll protect themselves to some degree, so it's not a mad panicked dash. It's more of a, a methodical analysis of the threats. Like, okay, we know there's caves back there that needed to be lit up, so we lit those up. Let's go see if there are caves out this way. I'm pretty sure I saw some sort of cave or ravine back here earlier. Oh, I hear a parrot. I don't think I can claim those guys without cookies. But, okay, so that lumberjack actually is going through and planting trees and stuff. No incredibly obvious cave location for mobs to spill out of. Hey, we got pigs up there. That's good. Might have to lure those back here with some carrots later. I don't think anything too dangerous is going to spawn in this little area here. That's that's nice. Okay. Oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. We got some seeds here. I seem to remember someone saying, I believe it was Liara, that you can use seeds to tame birds. Hey! There we go. So if I open-handed click it, will it ride my shoulder? Oh, there we go. Now he's on my shoulder. Perfect. So I've already made a little friend. Yeah. So Liara had played some early versions of this and advised me on setting up this, this recording attempt. So thank you very much to Titan Liara for that. Okay. So this all seems fine over here. No immediate... Whoa! Did that guy just jump off my shoulder? No, he just fluttered around for a minute. Okay, so if I get some wheat, I can lure the cows back. But, oh, wait, there's exactly the sort of cave that I was worried about. So... Oh, no, this is the sort of cave you do want to take home to mom. Look at that. Coal, everything. Oh, and a second layer of danger for exploring. That's always fun. Oh, so this one was also open to the world, so we could have had mobs spilling out of it at any time. That's a, a real treat. Oh, that reminds me. There were those uh, there was those zombie noises in the sewer under the village. I need to go clear that out. Okay, thank you, Parrot, for your continuous creeper noises. These are my new favorite sound to hear all the time when I have limited armor in a early game scenario. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome for that compliment, wonderful Parrot. I'm going to have to get a name tag for that. Oh, I have a name tag. I'm going to have to build an anvil so I can put a name on the name tag for that Parrot. Okay. So, there we go. That is all the coal we're going to get out of that pit. Let's go ahead and continue outward and onward and upward. Where is the sun in the sky? It is about to set in the west. So we had best get to bed before the mob spawned and begin decapitating the heads of our kind villagers. Is there a bed in this hut? No. Okay, that's a good note. Is there any Latin of any sort throughout here? Also no. So, uh, that's, that's important. Okay, can I sleep in the bed? 
since there are two, or these guys already claim these bits. Oh, dang it. Um, well, this is a, a bad way to start things off. Are these beds claimed? Good, good, good. Last thing we want is a bunch of mobs to spawn in the middle of town and then cause trouble for us. Now, mobs might have spawned in the amount of time it took there. I'm not sure. Okay, this parrot making mob noises is going to be a continuous strain on my stress levels. But that's okay. We're not here to relax. We're here to play video games. The most dangerous video games. The ones where we have to care for others in a community setting. They challenge our preconceptions about empathy and our individual notions of self in relationship to the community. I'm ready for the challenge. Okay. Well, it looks like we've been playing for about 20 minutes now, so I should probably go ahead and end this episode here, staring directly into this tall grass for maximum cinematic experiential decay. Just kidding. Let's uh, let's go look uh, overlook the village a little bit. Well, actually, there's not a great overlook for the village yet because we don't have an elytra or a way to get up there. Well, there is cool. St that is a cool place up there. Let's see. Can we? Whoops. Parkour. Wow, there's even more buildings up here I hadn't noticed. Which are hopefully not full of zombies. Yay! That's a small victory. Little bed in there. A ladder. A ladder popped off of something. Huh. Interesting. Somehow that block despawned. Well, this is not optimal either, actually. But hey, there's an extra bed for us here if we need it. We can maybe go ahead and claim our own home in the next episode. If I put this bed here, will that bed or that ladder here, will that be bed be missing or obstructed? It's hard to say. Hard to say indeed. But yeah. Welcome, y'all. To Walden 5. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. 